Hey everyone, and welcome to Lesser Known Fan Theory, something I started to talk about weird office theories, and now I'm just trying to make it a thing, so thanks for being a part of that. Today we're talking about The Good Place. Spoilers ahead, obviously. The Good Place is weird. It's so weird that the show seems to revel in that weirdness. Occasionally, that moment on the Bear Me timeline is the time moment when nothing never occurs. So, you get it. But for all of its oddities, it has comedy and it has heart. It's the only show I can think of that talks about ethical philosophy in the same sentence that there's a fart joke. Created by Michael Schur, who played Moe's on The Office, if you didn't know that, and a cast of actors who brought this show to life, relying on intelligent writing and a crew of set designers that probably were left scratching their heads quite often over some of the requests. The short runtime, four seasons and 13 episodes in each, allowed The Good Place to craft a really fascinating story, drive character development, and marvel in its many, many oddities. In other words, it's brief and it's weird, but because of those facts, there's plenty of theories that have hit the internet, and I'm gonna talk about some of those that I found particularly interesting to me. So first up, for as much structure and rules that are fleshed out in the afterlife and the universe as a whole, The Good Place never really broaches on one subject matter at all, at least from what I could remember. And that's the idea of a creator or a god. And because this is never established in the show, fans have run wild with a plethora of theories on who actually may be the one above all, in the Good Place universe. So let's start with the entity in the show, which seems to have the most absolute and unreckoned with power and knowledge and ability, the judge. Oh yeah, really cool. The judge has the seat above all authority in the afterlife. Both the Good Place and the Bad Place seem to be subservient to her and her decisions. She has all of the powers, even the ability to manipulate Janet's void dimensions. She's shown to have telekinesis, ability to grant new powers, and the ability to erase all life on Earth. I always thought it was weird that The Good Place only deals with just humans. Like, do aliens have their own different afterlife? Or is it similar to how Chidi is speaking French, but Eleanor hears English? Maybe they are aliens, but humans only see humans and vice versa. So Judge Jin might have a lot of power. She may be the god of this universe. But there is another theory that suggests that Janet might be the god of The Good Place universe. Now. For this theory to work, you have to accept that Janet created the world and the powers that be to rule with an iron bureaucracy and then limited herself to something like a root operating system just to keep the universe functioning. I'm like a printer. When the print queue suddenly starts processing all the unprinted documents. Oh man, buckle up folks. We never really get a solid grasp on what Janet is but we do know a lot of things she's not. The best robot. Not a robot. Girl. Not a girl. And straight up hottie. I am attractive, yes. And after multiple resets, the limitations that hold her back begin to fade away. Janet has emotions, compulsions, and maybe most interestingly, creativity. Creativity in her problem solving, and also the ability to create a full-grown creature in the form of Jason Manzoukas. One time I saw him walking down the street, I was in a dumpling shop in Chicago and I literally wanted to drop everything and go chase after him, but decided not to be that guy. Anyway, Derek is great, but even that character's trajectory tells us that Janet might be more than what meets the eye. She created a sentient thing as a mate for her. It didn't work out. And after he's reset so many times in the middle place, Derek becomes his own godlike creature essentially taking the form of a universe himself. That theory would suggest that Janet, given enough reboots, would free herself from those self-imposed chains and would be revealed as the creator of all things. A much less plausible, but still fun to think about is the theory for each of our main characters possibly being the god of the good place. I found multiple theories on each character, except to Hani. Sorry, I guess her character arc was pretty straightforward. I didn't see a single theory on it. So maybe drop one in the comments if you have it. But now each of these ideas have a sliver of merit, like Eleanor's the center of the story, fighting for mankind's fate, Chidi's comprehension of human nature, and his ability to problem solve at a universal level is amazing. And Jason, well, I think people just like to talk about Jason. Oh, word? Word. Past the question of who is the god of the good place is the question of where is the good place set? On the surface, the series 
bar in season one, is pretty straight with us about where the characters are at any given moment. With the Scooby Squad moving from the bad place to the middle place to the bad place to Earth to IHOP to then the good place. This show is super weird. But the next three theories suggest something else entirely is happening. First is the idea that the entire series is actually taking place in the bad place. And that's kind of dark, but the idea is that no matter what's happening on screen, our cast is actually being tortured. As in they make it to literal heaven and they're still being faced with unsurmountable problems. The bad place the whole time theory presents that the entire trajectory of the good place series, the dangling hope that's always there that led them through problem after problem is itself torture. Darkest of all, when the characters one by one enter that doorway in the finale, they're just reset back to season one, episode one. And they're forced to relive the entire thing like Sisyphus and The Rock. Eleanor, come on in. Forced to relive the stress, the doubts, the trial, the heartbreak, on and on for eternity. I think we're in the bad place. Jason figured it out? Jason? This is a real low point. That is really dark, but the next theory is the exact opposite, and that's that they were in the good place the entire time theory, which presents that regardless of where the characters think they are, it's actually a facade put on by the good place. And this is due to the infinite goodness principle explored in season four. Like Agent Smith tells Neo in The Matrix, humans reject absolute perfection. It's as though the idea that things are nice and easy is so foreign to us that we absolutely can't take it. I believe that as a species, human beings define their reality through misery and suffering. So much like the machines in The Matrix had to ease humans into this world by creating one that's full of chaos and pain, the good place must also force their new inhabitants into that same type of system to ease them into the afterlife. And think of it less like a test to get into the good place and more like a process to prep them for the good place. And that process gets them ready to understand and, and embrace the good place. Ideally, every single individual goes through this similar process. And that seems nicer. And the last set of theories that I got excited to share with you guys is about different shows that might actually exist within the good place universe. Now a show about characters bettering themselves through situational chaos I mean, that's like every sitcom ever. Fans of my channel may be familiar though with a video I made forever ago on the Sherverse theory or the Sherniverse theory. I like Sherverse, but whatever. It's the idea that Brooklyn Nine-Nine, The Office, Parks and Rec all reside within the Good Place universe. Each show depicts a different neighborhood in the Good Place. I made that video between season three and season four of The Good Place, and I think it actually holds up pretty well, so give that a watch if you want. But the gist is that the Easter eggs dropped in each show are actually evidence of a shared universe, something like how The Matrix explains chickens. That makes you wonder about a lot of things. Uh, you, you take chicken, for example, maybe they couldn't figure out what to make chicken taste like, which is why chicken tastes like everything. Just reused assets. That's also why the same people can appear in different series. They're either good place or bad place actors, architects, or just NPCs created by Janet, all for the sake of bettering specific individuals. Now, this doesn't explain why those people end up having babies, but I guess Upload's handling that weirdness now. But outside of sitcoms, it's possible that Lost actually fits into the good place universe too. Spoilers for Lost, the series depicts a plane full of passengers who survive a plane wreck just to be pawns in a couple of godlike creatures game of good versus evil and exploring the nature of mankind. Many of the same ethical philosophy questions are explored and the concept of a shared afterlife is also shown in that series. Also like The Good Place, Lost is just weird. And just for time, I wanted to share my favorite theory that I happened upon, which is the 90s Bill Murray Groundhog Day film actually fits nicely within The Good Place universe. This film shows Murray's terrible character trapped in a small town by a snowstorm, and he's forced to relive the same day on repeat until he eventually becomes a good person. The concept of repeating pocket dimensions, time travel, and using people to help people become better people all seem to fit into this idea. It's possible that the architects were just trying out a different approach with helping someone actually try out some of that afterlife testing process so that he could become a more noble person while he was still alive. 
Or he could have died in that snowstorm and this entire thing was just his good place test. But that's all the time I have for you now. Drop your ideas on these theories in the comments, other good place theories in the comments, or shows that you want me to cover next in the comments. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.